we still find ourselves waiting for Starship's sweet boom time action. The next Falcon Heavy launch gets delayed, a SpaceX founding father says goodbye, and we finish with today's honorable mention. I'm Kevin, and this is not depressing at all. Elon tweeted Lab Padre's video of Starbase welcoming its first tourist from another universe. And fucking Thor just couldn't keep the excitement in his pants. Wow, I didn't hear any thunder, but out of your fingers, was that like sparkles? Understandable though, it happens to everyone when they see Starship in person for the first time. Holy cow, it's a freaking spaceport, brah. On Sunday night, SN20's flaps were extended and retracted as SpaceX continues to pace through its testing regiment in preparation for orbital flight sometime in the future. Nobody, not me, not Elon, not even the government, has a freaking clue when that will happen. Okie dokie, gentlemen, are we all here ready to fucking go? I asked you all a question! <laughs> so just sit back, relax, kick your feet up, and enjoy the exhilarating ride of anticipation. There are road closures scheduled for next week for a possible methane-laden butt belch, but place your bets. In the meantime, engineers are tidying up the place in preparation for the blessing of the almighty green light. The launch tower's carriage has been lifted and staged, so it can likely receive its rocket-catching arms before attachment to the tower. The orbital tank farm has also received its seventh and final cryo storage tank yesterday, GSE-8. And still, with all those activities going on at the launch site, the next Starship and booster continue to be assembled at the construction yard. SN21's nose cone received its fins, and Booster 5 is close to being fully stacked in the high bay. Its four grid fins and aero covers are on standby for mounting as well. Even parts for Booster 6 have been spotted lying around, including a thrust puck containing 13 Raptor ports for a 33-engine first stage. <laughs> Last weekend, the crew of Inspiration4 sat down for a little insider chat with SpaceX employees at their Hawthorne headquarters, telling them all about their five-star experience that was literally, literally out of this world, despite the two-star bathroom facilities. And because they went far beyond the Carmen line, and I don't mean just slightly over it for a quick in and out, I'm talking full penetration, way higher than any other human being in decades, further than the astronauts who were working on the space station at the time. They were awarded with legitimate custom-made dragon wings. Come on, Jeff, get him! And speaking of the world's former richest man, he wasn't a part of this conversation either. On Wednesday, NASA and SpaceX held a Crew-3 Leaders Discussion Mission Overview, where SpaceX somehow managed to flex without hubris. So Crew-3 will be flying on a new Dragon spacecraft. It's really exciting to introduce another uh, Crew Dragon to our fleet to support our human spaceflight manifest. We've got another one uh, in the production line now that should be ready in the spring to support more human spaceflight missions. Um, those four Crew Dragon vehicles uh, seem sufficient to meet our manifest, which is thriving right now, and it's exciting to see all of the traffic on these vehicles. You know reusability is key to SpaceX. It's a big deal that Dragon is reusable with improved refurbishment efficiency with each passing flight. This is not the case for other orbital spacecraft. Don't worry, Jeff, that wasn't a dig at Blue Origin. Elon clearly wrote orbital spacecraft. Elon was probably referring to Boeing and their Starliner capsule, which to be clear, can be reused if they can get it to work. And on a totally unrelated note, NASA just announced they took a couple of astronauts off the Starliner 1 roster and moved them over to Dragon, fearing the astronauts could retire or die of old age before getting the chance to go to space. The lawyer wife tells me I have to put a wink at this part for defamation purposes. Nicole Mann and Josh Casada will now command and pilot, respectively, the Crew-5 mission no earlier than fall 2022. The agency decided it was important to make the reassignments to allow Boeing time to complete Starliner development. And speaking of delays that are everyone else's fault, the Falcon Heavy that was supposed to launch this month for the Space Force was pushed to early next year due to delays caused by, quote, the need to accommodate payload readiness. Government is inefficient and should be dissolved. Please hold while I transfer you. Bob and Doug finally reunited at Port Canaveral. Great, Scott was there waiting in the bush to snoop on the new fairing recovery ships. Scandalous. SpaceX's four technical employee and Vice President of Mission Assurance, Hans J. Koenigsman, 
officially retired from the company this week to join the supervisory board and play with lasers at Minaric. 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 Congrats, Hans. Drinks are on you. Hans. Now it's time for today's honorable mention. Blue Origin announced that former captain of the Enterprise, Bill Shartner, will once again pretend. <laughs> Shat. <laughs> Shartner <laughs> will once again pretend to go to outer space on their new Shepard rocket no earlier than October 12th. The 90-year-old professional pretender is excited for the opportunity, but still seems slightly disappointed that he's not allowed to bring anything with him on the journey. That's what we call the Blue Origin Buzzkill. Well, that's all I have for you guys today. Appreciate you tuning in. And I certainly appreciate those of you who are supporting the channel through Patreon, YouTube's join feature, PayPal, or by purchasing an eccentric shirt or patch. Links are in the description. Do have a nominal weekend, and until next time, Godspeed.